Hello friends. So right now, right now I would like to discuss you with uh, uh, the inflammation of the sclera. I would like to start a new chapter about sclera. So in that I would like to discuss with inflammation of sclera. And in the inflammation of sclera, I am going to discuss you about episcleritis. So what does the word episcleritis means? It is inflammation of episclera. Right? Inflammation of episclera, which is a dense vascular tissue over the sclera proper. So there is inflammation of episclera. I hope you all know what episclera is. There is a sclera over the sclera layer. There is a small layer which is episclera. So this is episcleritis right inflammation of episclera is episcleritis so uh, what are the etiological features so this is a picture of a person suffering with episclera or episcleritis right so what are the etiolog etiological features one is idiopathic that is the cause is ana and the second one is systemic diseases systemic diseases which include uh, gout it may be due to gout it may uh, be due to rosacea or psoriasis all these may be the uh, may, may, may lead to episcleritis it's not necessary that all these disorders will surely uh, produce as episcleritis but it may be associated with these disorders, connective tissue disorders, right? Mm, so these are the major etiological features and majorly which is the most common is it may be due to hypersensitivity reaction, right? Uh, hypersensitivity reaction is mainly uh, seen when antigen and antibody combine together and this causes hypersensitivity reaction antigen is something which is from outside and antibody is produced in our body so here the antigen uh, in this episcleritis includes tubercular or uh, streptococcal toxins right all these these both function as antigens and they result in uh, episcleritis right and the fine the fourth type of uh, fourth etiological factor is infectious cause it may be due to some of the infections uh, which are caused by sorry her, herpes zoster virus which is chickenpox virus so that may cause episcleritis or it may be due to syphilis or it may be due to Lyme's disease or tuberculosis all these may lead to this uh, episcleritis right so this is the major etiological features which are seen uh, in which may lead to episcleritis now leading to pathology so all these etiological factors which are which we have seen these would lead to a lymphocytic infiltration that is whenever there is some foreign body or whenever there is some antigen or anti or some infectious agents the lymphocytes come and they uh, rest i mean they invade the area and they try to kill the pathogens so there is in lymphocytic infiltration which is seen which leads to edema and congestion right these are seen uh, in episcleritis so if you see here this is the normal sclera but here due to uh, lymphocytic infiltration you can see yellow type of things these are lymphocytic infiltration and these leads to edema which you can see the bulging of this membrane which is yellow color that is edema and there is congestion so these are the pathological features now coming to the clinical features of sorry 
clinical features of epistleritis the clinical features uh, are basically if you see they are divided into two types one is symptoms and the other is signs symptoms is basically there is red there may be redness uh, ocular discomfort or it may be gritty or burning or there may be foreign body sensation right there may be foreign body sensation that is a little discomfort there may be sometimes or rarely my photophobia may be seen or sometimes my lack cremation may also be seen my signs if you see the signs it may be basically divided into two types one is not simple epistleritis this epistleritis basically on the signs it can be divided into simple epistleritis or nodular epistleritis these both are the pictures of simple epistleritis and nodular epistleritis so here in simple i'm sorry uh, in simple epistleritis you can see a uh, sectorial that is one section or diffuse sorry or diffuse inflammation of sclera sclera may be seen and if you see the vessels red color all these are the vessels the vessels are large and they are radial are they are in radial direction and they are present beneath conjunctiva right this is in simple epistleritis if it's nodular epistleritis you can see pink purple flat nodule is seen and this nodule is firm tender and this is removed uh, and this um, nodule can be removed or moved basically it is moved uh, from sclera it is separated from sclera to say moved or it, it may be separated sorry uh, it may be separated from sclera right it may be separated from sclera so this is about the nodular epistleritis so what are the clinical course uh the course is it is generally clinical course if you see it is generally self limiting that is 10 days to 3 weeks and then there is spontaneous resorption there is no need to spontaneous resolution there is no need to use lots and lots of drugs to make it come down but within 10 days to 3 weeks it spontaneously recur uh, uh, resolves and sometimes uh, uh, recurrences are common recurrences are generally common uh, then uh, if you see the differential diagnosis it may be simple uh, if you if you see simple epistleritis it may be confused with conjunctivitis right because of diffuse uh, red color uh, or do we say because of diffuse red color the uh, um, 
uh, blood vessels those may be sometimes distinct may confused with uh, conjunctivitis or if you see nodular epicleritis it may be confused with some of the conditions like inflamed pingucula sorry inflamed pingucula or swelling or congestion uh that is swelling due to why why there is a swelling due to it may be due to foreign body right so this is nodular epicleritis so it may be simple epicleritis it may be confused with uh, conjunctivitis that is differential diagnosis for simple epicleritis is conjunctivitis and for nodular epicleritis is inflamed ping pingula or swelling due to foreign body right So these are the differential diagnoses now coming to the treatment of epicleritis the best treatment is usage of topical nsaids which is most commonly used is keto sorry ketorolac ketorolac 0.3% is most commonly used or you can also use topical mild corticosteroid drops uh, there are some of the corticosteroid drops which are topical that is uh, given as eye drops uh, so those can be used these include fluoromethylone or loti pridnala pridnol both are instilled 2 to 3 hourly right or you can use topical artificial scissors uh, tears topical artificial tears can be used which has 0.5% of carboxymethyl cellulose these can be used to prevent the eyes from drying and for soothing effect right and you can also use cold compress sorry you can also use uh, so you can use all these topical drugs or you can use cold compress and even then if it doesn't resolve then you can use systemic nsaids like indomethacin sorry indomethacin 25 mg which is for 3 days right they can be used so all these are the mm, treatment for epicleritis so in epicleritis we have generally seen the etiological factors of epicleritis and then we have seen the pathogenesis symptoms all these are the general symptoms to start with redness ocular discomfort foreign body mild photophobia lacrimation all these are the general uh, non specific symptoms and it is of two types signs are the basic things which should be kept in mind simple epicleritis and nodular the signs are really important and then differential diagnosis and finally the treatment of epicleritis if there are any mistakes please try to uh correct me and thank you.